Hey friends, welcome to She's in Her Apron. Join me today as I restock my shelves and show you how I rotate my items. And we're gonna find out about the expiration dates or best buy dates put on our canned goods. And I'll be sharing with you two grocery hauls. So let's get started. I went bulk shopping. Today I'm putting that stuff away. Get all of that haul up on this shelf. Now I have four children, but two of them rudely decided to grow up and move out. One got married. Our oldest son is in the army. I get asked the question a lot. So you're now down to two kids. Why do you still shop the way that you did when you had kids at home? One, habit. And two, I don't really as, as much as you think I do. I know what meals we go through. I know what freezer meals I make with all this food. So we can have some make ahead meals for the week. I really don't buy like I used to. But everything gets used. Everything gets eaten. Okay, so here's my big tip for you guys. How fast do we really go through this before it goes bad? And then you can go, okay, if I, if we eat this meal or if this ingredient belongs to a meal and we have it twice a month, and I know if it's the winter, uh, I bet we'll have it twice a month for the next four months. You're gonna grab eight of that one thing, put it on your shelf, and so you shopped when there's a sale, so that way when you go make the meal later in the next two, three months, you're not buying the full price. That's what I do. I'm gonna answer the question that I get asked a lot. How long do canned goods really last? Well friends, manufacturers are required to date their products. Most of them do it with a date that can guarantee the product will hold up to its nutritional value. This is why most can or box foods will actually say best buy or used buy. The best buy date is just simply a guide so that you're aware that after that date, the product may taste a bit different than you might expect. This just means that the majority of the products in your pantry can be stored a lot longer than they actually say by the date. Ah, how long though? The experts say that they suggest customers eat these foods within 12 to 18 months for the best quality. Friends, you could go years past that. And I know this because I've had some of my canned goods tested by the expert on the TV show Inside Edition. I sent them two cans of cranberry sauce. One was sell by October 29th, 23, and another one by May 29th, 2020. Contents of the older cans were perfectly fine. They were suitable for consumption. Another expert on their show said, as long as that can has been stored at a proper temperature in a nice cool dry place and it's not damaged, it can last past its expiration date. I even gave him a can of peaches with the best buy date of September 2018. He opened it, he smelled it, he tasted it. They actually taste fine. So there you go. So what does this all mean? It means to feel free to stock up the next time you see a great sale. You'll actually have time to use them before they spoil and you'll be able to save big by building up your pantry stockpile. High acid canned goods like canned fruits and tomatoes should be eaten within one to two years past their expiration date. I've never gone past two years on any of my canned goods because we rotate through them all. Low acid canned goods like vegetables, canned meats, and soups can be eaten within two to three years past their expiration date. And if you have any shelf stable milk like evaporated milk, condensed milk, they could be used within a year after their expiration date. There are exceptions though. If the can is dented, especially along the seam, or shows any signs of bulging or rust, it could be a sign of spoiling or botulism. This is very dangerous, so definitely get rid of those cans. This is one of the many reasons why I love aprons. <laughs> you can carry a lot in them. Grab it all the canned pineapple and bringing it into the food storage room. <laughs> it's getting heavy now. Oh boy. <laughs> I got all the pineapple in my apron. Would you look at that? Now let's go put this on the shelf. Now, can you think off the top of your head the recipes, the, your main go-to recipes that you would need pineapple for? And then think, how often do you have them? How much should you have on your shelf? That's how I know how much I need to get and have on my shelf at a certain time. Summer's coming up and we have all our fun summer salads that call for pineapple. Now I wanna make sure though, the ones in the back actually might need to be brought forward. So what I need to do, this is March 18th, 2024. These new chunk ones are October, 2025. These ones need to come up front and then these new ones can go in the back. 
that's how I rotate. The newer ones I just bought head toward the back and those other ones get brought forward. And that, my friends, is how you make sure you rotate through them and things get used up. Whew, that was a workout. Now some of you are probably thinking, why doesn't Derek help you putting all this stuff away? No, no. You know what? You do your thing, I'll do my thing. Yeah. I got a system here. I'm good. Wait, observe your shopping habits. I'm gonna stock up on a certain time of the year where the sales are good so I could use them during the year. I noticed that around this time of year we go through more mayo than the winter months or the summer months. So just observe. And so when you see a sale and there's a really good deal, you're not buying the full price. We came up with the Know Before You Go grocery price book. You'll be able to track four grocery stores in your area with the item that you're looking for. Price and unit price, and up here in the header, we have every category you can think of to track. Everything in canned goods, bakery in the freezer section, produce section, baby wines down to house cleaners. This is how I save money. What you're doing is tracking regular prices so when that store has a sale or another store has a sale, you can really see if it's a sale or not. If you would like one, I'll have it linked for you down below. This is all my pasta. Another thing I get asked about a lot is storing dry pasta. How long will it last? Well, when it comes to dry pastas, the experts say two to five years if they're kept in their own package. So storing these pasta bags in these buckets like this, I know I have up to five years, but they can last over 20 years if they're stored in an airtight container. Or if I cut a little slit in this bag, put it in a food saver bag, and vacuum seal up the whole bag. So do not throw out any pasta that's gone past that expiration date. So if you see a really good deal on pasta, snag what you can and know if it's stored properly, you got 20 plus years on those bad boys. Salt is something to always have on hand in your food storage. Never goes bad, lives forever. You need salt. I have a combination of just regular salt and idolized salt. I don't worry about rotating my salt, I don't. Rotate your items. When you're restocking your grocery store or pantry or cupboards, it's important to properly rotate your items. This means placing the newest items in the back and bringing the older items to the front. This is where I keep all my little cans of diced chilies and jalapenos. So I need to make room for them here. I gotta make some Mississippi chicken. I think I'm gonna put that on the menu for next week. All right, so these are the ones that I need to get used up first, but let's look at the dates. So this is July 13, 2022. So now these diced green chilies are August of 2024. These will go at the bottom. And these ones that I'm using right now go on top. These are jalapenos. Well, I think what I'm gonna do is take some jalapenos from this new one and put some on the shelf here and put the rest of this way above my shelf up here and then we'll restock it when we run low. I didn't buy any refried beans this last time um, during the haul, but I have a box that was up on a higher shelf with that the Best Buy 2024 and these are 23. So I'm gonna put the 24 at the bottom and then put the 23 back on top. This is how I work out, guys. Oh. It seriously is a workout. Oh. Look at these guns. Oh, look at that old lady. I went grocery shopping for the last month and I have some hauls to share with you what I got, the savings. I got some really good finds at Winco. One major score was the butter. I grabbed six salted butters and four unsalted. I haven't seen butter hit the twos in a while. And this was without a coupon. Good deal, putting it in the freezer. Some strawberries, they looked really good two peppers, six honey crisp apples, 
I just love a good honey crisp. Asparagus, this was a good price for this little bundle. Two more cucumbers, we are just like our snack at night, Derek and I are like dipping fresh veggies in ranch. So we've been snacking on cucumbers, carrots, and celery. So I grabbed two more bags of celery. I did grab their romaine lettuce. It was the cheapest I can find in a three bundle compared to any other grocery store. My Costco is out and a bag of coleslaw because we have another packet of frozen fish in the freezer and we can do fish tacos again. I grabbed some Italian dry salami. I love snacking on this with cheese. The Italian sausage, the Johnsonville hot. This is what I make my Italian gravy with and we just made some the other day. So I'm replacing the two that I bought and at that price for my area, it was very good. And then I grabbed one each of the mild flavor por pork sausage spicy hot and Italian style, some bananas, two bags of frozen bro broccoli florets, great, great deal on chicken breasts. They were $1.88 a pound. Uh, I grabbed four packages, so I stocked up, and this package ended up coming to $6.28. This one down here, $5.81. This one, $6.30, and this one, $7.18. Since I was at Winco, I took advantage of being there and grabbing their whip topping for a lower price. With inflation, their low price is now what we used to normally pay at all the other grocery stores. So it's a real bummer. And then I splurged and got this grater set. It's a mason jar, but on top it has a grater and then you could store it in there. What? Okay, we'll try that out. And this again was our Winco haul. Next up is my Costco haul. For the frozen and meats, I grabbed the Adele pineapple and bacon sausages. These are so good. Two packages together of pork tenderloin. And then the Italian dry salami. I'm going to put one in the fridge and the other one is going in the freezer. And then we have the Milton's cauliflower crust pizza, roasted vegetable. This is such a yummy gluten-free pizza. Mmm, it is seriously so good. So we got that as a backup. And then the uncured black forest ham for sandwiches. A big bag of the Kirkland whole green beans. I wanted to try these for a long time. I did show them during the holidays. It's their sheet pan vegetables. Lightly seasoned blend of Brussels sprouts, sweet potatoes, broccoli florets, red onion, and zucchini. Oh my gosh. And then this was a splurge for a quick meal for the kids. The garlic chicken, and it's got pasta and garlic sauce with broccoli, carrots, and corn. Picked up some organic lactose-free milk. Has three half gallons in there. Some more seasonings, taco seasonings, and we're gonna try the Danos. I've seen and heard so many great things about it. A whole cashews, they're not doing their jar for this one, but it's the same size. I already ripped it open when I was at the register at the store, I was so hungry. And a three pack of the whipped heavy cream topping and the lactose free chocolate milk. And then more celery. This is 40 ounces, so 2.5 pounds. And then 3.5 pounds of the organic zucchini and squash, some English cucumbers, a pack of three, big bag of romaine, six hearts in it, strawberries, they're huge, and a big uh, 48 ounce bag of broccoli florets, and look how gorgeous these tomatoes are. Lots of tomatoes. Okay, for non-food, we grabbed another big package of toilet paper. There are 30 rolls in this package, and then some more paper towels. There are 12 rolls in here. On sale was the Finish Jet Dry and the Cascade was on sale as well, which is perfect because we needed more. Hold the phones. I will find empty boxes of food, like snack food, up on these shelves that they got into. Why don't you just throw the box away? I don't know. It's much too hard for them, much too hard. If you want to know 20 foods to have on your shelf that don't expire, click on this video here and I'll share those with you. I'll meet you over there. Thanks for joining me today. Bye.